What's up, y'all? Welcome to episode 23 of The Journey Podcast with me, Jada Christine. So this episode was supposed to be up last week, but it didn't go up. And funny thing, this episode is all about discouragement. Last week, this video did not go up because I was discouraged. And I let the negative thoughts in my mind prevent me from even from even writing, you know, this message out from God. And I let those negative thoughts get the best of me. I let those, I let that discouragement get the best of me. And so, um, as God ministered to me, as I wrote out this message, he is bringing me here today to minister it to you. And I hope this has some impact in your life. I hope it uplifts you. If you are in a place where you're discouraged, where you feel beat down, where you've been going through a lot of spiritual warfare, where you've been going up through just a lot of storm, fire, whatever. If you feel like you're burning up in flames or you in an ocean, it's going crazy. <laughs> and this episode is for you. Um, I'm here to remind you that you are more than a conqueror. And most of this episode is going to come from Romans 8. So if you want to follow along, read along, pull out that Bible, get out your phone, the Bible app, pull it out and um, follow along. We're going to be reading from the end, the bottom of Romans 8. And so Romans 8, 31 through 39, I believe. But we're actually going to start at verse 36. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe if you're enjoying the episode as you were listening. Make sure to share it with a friend or post it on your stories and get that word out there and um, enjoy. So Romans 8, 36 through seven, it says, as it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And even when I was just reading Romans eight, when I was reading this part, it really just hit home for me. It was really just so encouraging and so edifying for my spirit, y'all. I actually, I posted a video on TikTok last night cause I had just written this last night and I was like, I finally understood, not finally, but it's because, you know, I mean, I knew it all along, but it finally, like, it really hit that Jesus wasn't playing when he said that he gives you the living water. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. There is something that the word of God gives you that food and water cannot provide for you. There is a nourishment that comes from the word of God that you cannot get from anything else. No, nothing compares to the word of God and the way it just nourishes your spirit, refreshes you. It gives you this uplifting feeling. It's inexplainable. This episode is basically here to remind you that no matter what you've been through this year, no matter how discouraged you are or how beat down you feel, you are still more than a conqueror because of the God that we serve. Back to that first, it says that we are regarded as sheep for slaughter for his sake. So unfortunately, the devil is after us. <laughs> As children of God, the devil is after us because our whole life serving God, it's in opposition to him in the kingdom of darkness. It's that deep. It's that serious. With him being after us, we're going to encounter a lot of suffering. We're going to encounter rejection. We're going to encounter discouragement. We're going to encounter unsupportive people, negativity, haters, lies, etc, etc, etc. Especially if you are working hard to do something good with your life. Especially if you are a child of God. Because the enemy will literally send people your way with the one mission to break you down. He'll send thoughts to your mind that will trouble you with doubt. He can't read your mind, but he'll do stuff in your life to get you to think negatively, to be doubtful. He'll even send you dreams, y'all, to discourage you, like demonic discouragement. I've had dreams of my own, of the people who support me in real life, discouraging, laughing at me, bullying me in my dreams against the things that I've been working on in private with the Lord. And that's how you know it's the enemy, because you don't tell nobody. You know that these people will be supportive for you. He, the enemy sees what you're doing. He sees that you're working towards something. He's going to try to get you to back down. He'll come in your dream in disguise of people, but really be demons. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to say like, oh, I'm not so, I'm not that easily shaken. Doubtful thoughts, negative thoughts, that can't really break me down like that. But when it actually comes, when that stuff happens and you're already shaken in your faith and you're already struggling in keeping your faith, it tends to have a lot of power in keeping you stagnant and delaying you. And it has for me, definitely. Walking with God isn't easy in itself because we cannot see what he's doing and we can't even see him physically. So when you're walking by faith, it's so easy to let what you see with your physical eyes and what you hear with your ears 
deter you from the mission that God has placed you on this planet to do. And that is the enemy's mission. He says, okay, I'm going to deter you. I'm going to get you off your path because you're on the straight and narrow, but I'm going to try to break you off. So I'm going to send this your way. I'm going to let this person tell you that you ain't worth nothing. I'm going to let this person um, deny you, reject you to make you feel worthless. That is literally what he thinks. He comes to kill, still and destroy. When you're walking strong in your faith and people all of a sudden start being negative to you, trying to get reactions out of you, being out outspokenly negative about you, and a bunch of defeating thoughts start coming in, just know that the devil, the enemy, is trying to break you down. Just know that it is him because he's intimidated by you. He's afraid of your potential and you should consider it good. I know, in the moment when you're getting attacked by the enemy, it doesn't feel good, but you should consider it good because you have successfully threaten the kingdom of darkness you have worked so hard to do good to be a light for god's world that you have threatened the kingdom of darkness and you actually have an impact on this world james 1 2 through 4 says dear brothers and sisters when troubles of any kind come your way consider an opportunity for great joy for you know that when your faith is tested your endurance has a chance to grow so let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed you will be perfect and complete lacking nothing the good thing about those defeating moments is that they strengthen us and the next time that we encounter something negative it won't break us down so easily and so all of a sudden when someone being verbally abusive to you would have broke you down and caused you to give up in one moment a year later a year later the same thing happens and you can still push through it you can brush it off because you've been prepared you've been through it before and you know that God has brought you through it before and he can bring you through it again because all the enemy does is lie, y'all. Don't believe those lies. So what we're going to do is we're going to dissect this scripture, Romans 8, 31 to 39 from the beginning. And I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version today. There's going to be a little NLT because, you know, sometimes it's hard to understand. But we're going to be reading mostly from the New King James Version because we want that meat, y'all. We don't want it watered down. So first verse. Romans 8 31 it says what then shall we say to these things if God is for us who can be against us the good thing about serving God and being on his team is that he's on our team and he's undefeated basically what this is saying is that if God is for us if God is our righteous judge if God is our defender and our protector who would dare step against us and actually think that they're gonna win no one would no one can and they may try but they can't they don't have the ability to because he is god he is sovereign no one can reverse or change what god's will is for your life that means when these haters are telling you no you can't do that no you can't make it doing that way no you can't be successful god is looking at you or god is looking at the situation and saying yes my daughter can yes my son can he's advocating for you and if we were able to keep that in mind every single time someone tried to come at us with negativity or hate. Every single time someone says, no, you can't become a better person. No, you cannot get healed. No, you can't ever succeed. It won't hit as hard because you know that the almighty God is rooting for you. If God is for us, who can be against us? We have the ability to face all the negativity that life throws at us confidently with a smile on our face, simply because God, the creator of everything in this universe is rooting for us. He's on our side. He wants us to win. Let's go to verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? What this is saying is that God sent his own son as the perfect sacrifice to die for us. And it's saying that if God would withhold his own son from us, what else would he withhold from us? There's actually multiple places in the Bible where this verse is kind of reiterated. Matthew 7, 11 says, So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? And it says it in Psalms 84, 11, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Now, God isn't a genie. I'm sure we'd all want a million dollars to fall out of the sky into our lap and all of our problems to disappear. But he knows us better than to give us something that will ultimately draw us away from him in the long run. In these verses, there is an emphasis on the word good, or I wanna emphasize the word good. It says no good gifts, no good thing. He doesn't want us to miss out on the good things of life. And I know that when we, in our minds, certain things would be good for us, but sometimes we don't know in the long run how that would turn out. So, in our minds, a million dollars is a good gift from God. I mean, shoot. But 
if God get if God blessed you with that a million dollars and all of a sudden you start splurging it on a bunch of things, money becomes the, the ruler of your life, then he has ultimately given you something that has drawn you away from him. So when it says no good thing, it means no good thing as in a good thing for you. The things we consider good are not always the things that God considers good. So rejection and denial from opportunities, from jobs, from things is often our, for our protection because it wouldn't have been good for us. And so we're saying, God, we may say, God, why would you reject me? Why would they deny me from this good thing, from this good job? When really he knows, oh, no, they were going to scam you. They were going to play you. They were going to fire you in a week. That wouldn't have been good for you. In our minds, we're like, oh, God, what do I do? I just got rejected from this good thing, from this job, this opportunity. But he knows in the long run. There are just so many things that we don't understand is basically what I'm trying to say. I'm going to read verse 33 and 34 in NLT and New King James Version. New King James Version says, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? And the NLT version says, because I didn't understand, let me tell you, I, I was reading that and I didn't understand it. So NLT says, who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the right place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. These questions that they're asking in these verses, if God is for us, who can be against us? Who dare accuse us? Who will condemn us? They're all hypothetical. They're all sarcasm because no one can. That's how big your God is. Your big G God is. That's how big he is. No one can. No one has the authority over his children but him. So when it looks like these people have authority over our lives where we may encounter rejection, where we may encounter those no's, God has the final say. These verses kind of hype me up. <laughs> Who gonna step to me? Who gonna step to God's child? Who gonna step to God? No one is because they can't, they can't compare to him. Verse 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Again, these are all sarcasm because as powerful these things may feel, as powerful tribulation may feel when it comes our way, they still have no authority over the love of God in our lives, over the hand of God in our lives. This is why it was so encouraging to me because I had been feeling so beaten down. And reading these verses, it reminded me that there is no amount of trouble, there's no amount of pain in this world that will ever take me out of God's hands, that will ever pull me away from him. Even when I'm going through the storm, he is still there. And that is the reminder I definitely needed. Then we get back to verse 36 and 37, which we discussed at the beginning. As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 38 through 39 says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, I've read this verse a lot of times. And at my young age of 20 years old, there's a lot of things I haven't experienced in this life. But lately, with the amount of warfare I had been going through, specifically in my place of rest as I sleep the warfare in the middle of the night... <laughs> It hit different because with that warfare, I had been feeling restless. I had felt tired. I felt worn out. Like I'm in the ring with freaking Mike Tyson and he's just dog dogging me, dogging me, like breaking me down. That's what it felt like. Like, dang, God, I'm tired. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of fighting. Of course, Mike Tyson being the enemy. That's what it felt like. Like, God, I'm tired of fighting. I want to put my gloves down and I want to rest. I don't want to keep fighting. When you encounter trouble, you can back down. Or you can fight against it knowing how big your God is. And I was feeling so overwhelmed and so broken and so tired of fighting against it. I wanted to back down that I wanted to give up. And so for a minute, for a minute, I was questioning God, like, God, why would you even allow this to happen in my life? 
why would you let the enemy touch me? Like, how dare you let him come into my place of rest? How dare you let him come into my mind and let him interfere with my interfere with my sleep? Give me nightmares. Give me negative thoughts. How dare you allow him to come in? And I'm trying my hardest to fight. That's how I felt. And that's real. I mean, I was really asking these questions like, God, you're supposed to fight my battles for me, aren't you? I was saying, God, you're supposed to intercede for me, aren't you? So I had been praying that. And a couple of nights later, I literally saw, you may, you may not believe me, but I literally saw intercession on my behalf from God, from the kingdom of light. I literally saw intercession on my behalf. And I'm going to, I'm going to get ahead of myself, actually. If we knew what went on in the spiritual realm, we would not complain as much when we get hit, when we get broken down. The word says in Ephesians 6, 12, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now that sounds dark. And it says, I want to take note in the heavenly places, there's a war going on. I had been fighting those wicked principalities that those that the word refers to that I didn't know existed. I haven't encountered, I hadn't encountered anything like that in my life. And so before when spiritual warfare meant anxiety and depression and just, you know, negative thoughts, I'm feeling down. Oh, maybe some things are happening. Maybe my pocket's a little bit low right now. It was things that were actually coming for my spirit. To get me to stop what I'm doing, that ki- that kind of attack that would try to break you down and get you to give up. And so when I saw this verse again, it hit a little different this time because I knew that nothing would separate me from his love, but it pinpointed exactly. Nor angels, nor principalities, nor power will separate us from his love. In that moment when I saw God interceding for me, it's like I could finally see that he wasn't ignoring me the entire time because I felt ignored. I felt like, God, okay, I know you got to take us through tests, but why are you allowing this to happen? I know you got to strengthen me up, but I don't want to. I'm like, I'm tired of this. And it's like, sometimes God has to do the hard things. He has to watch us go through hard times because he's trying to build something in us. And that's something I had to understand. But I was like, God, no, I'm tired. The devil was trying to take my peace. Like, he had been fighting for me the whole time. I just couldn't see it because we don't have that vision. My prayers weren't ignored. Even though I was still tired of fighting, he was still fighting for me. God didn't stop working. God never stops working. Literally, he never stops working. He doesn't sleep. Jesus literally said in John 5, 17, my father is always working and so am I. He said that because he was working on the Sabbath and the Jews were trying to kill him. He is always working, even when we can't see it. Y'all know that worship song? Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop. I can't sing. You never stop working. <laughs> I can't sing. You never stop. You never stop working. That's it, It's real. And I couldn't see it. I couldn't see him working. I couldn't feel him working because I was too caught up on how discouraged how I felt, how tired I felt. All I could feel, all I could feel in that moment was the pressure. All I could feel in that moment was the warfare. I couldn't see God in the moment. I was too focused on the negativity. I was too focused on the fact that I was feeling oppressed. I was too focused on the fact that I was feeling beaten down. Too focused on the discouragement. Too focused on the warfare. Too focused on the tiresome and too focused on the frustration. And I finally saw just how God had been there the entire time interceding on my behalf. And I get so sappy. (laughs) I get so sappy when I think about how God thinks of every single one of us individually, deeply. He really thinks of us. And this is kind of what I was talking about in the last episode about the intimacy of God um, and the Samaritan woman. I just can't forget how, and it makes me so emotional, I can't forget how he called me by, by name. He called us by name out of darkness when he chose us, when he saved us when he rescued us and now i cannot forget how he's my right hand he's by me he's by my side he's my rock he's been interceding for me and fighting for me fighting my battles for me because i don't have the strength to there's this meme i remember seeing in high school and i'm gonna put it on the screen so you can see what i'm talking about if you're watching on um youtube but basically there's this little boy he's sitting and he's praying he's like god please protect me and then all of a sudden a rock hits him in the head and he's like, God, why? God, why you let the rock hit me? He's like, what's going on? He feels like his whole world just got torn down. And that's how we get sometimes when we encounter trouble. We're like, dang God, oh, what happened? You know, it's shaking. Like, And he looks up, he looks up and he sees what's supposed to be Jesus standing there. Jesus is standing there with his arms out, taking a bunch of hits, a million rocks being thrown at him 
protecting the boy that's sitting there praying. And one rock missed and hit him. And then Jesus says, I'm sorry, did I miss one? You all right? And I remember seeing it and it, and it really put things in perspective for me. And especially now, because we have no idea, not one idea, how many fiery arrows that we've dodged because God interceded for us, because God fought for us, because God stopped it, he protected us. It, it literally says in that verse, like take a close look, it says we are accounted as sheep for slaughter. We are accounted as sheep for slaughter for his sake. That means the enemy's after us. He's the one throwing all those rocks. Sometimes it's just life, but sometimes we're, we're, we're sought after to be destroyed and he's, he's standing there fighting for us. We walk around with these targets on our backs, yet we remain untouchable because of the God that we serve. There is an actual war for our souls being fought every single day in heavenly places. Like I said earlier, in Ephesians 6, 12, there's a war between the principalities of darkness and God and his angels and his soldiers. God is fighting for us because the devil wants us dead spiritually. He wants to take our spirit. He wants our souls. He does. He wants us to completely serve him. He wants us to be dark. He wants us to be heavy in anxiety and depression and suppressing it with drugs. He wants us to be enslaved to sin. He wants us to be in shackles to serving everything but God. He wants us to be serving alcohol. Like I can't do nothing if I can't take a shot. He wants us to be in shackles to weed. Oh, I can't go about my day if I can't smoke a blunt. He wants to keep us oppressed. If you really see it from a spiritual level, these aren't just innocent addictions to the things we have in the world. We don't just have innocent addictions to sex because sex is good. We don't just have innocent addictions to porn because porn makes us feel good. We don't just have innocent addictions to music. Oh, I, I got to listen to this song. The song gets, a, gets me feeling some type of way. That's a spirit. That's a spirit behind the song that's making you feel that type of way. Oh, I got to play this song. It gives me feeling right. Oh, I got to play this type of song. It gets me hype. It gets me angry. It gets me ready to go go about my day. There's, it's a spiritual thing and the devil wants so bad to deceive you and keep you in shackles to whatever it is that you're serving besides God. And he does it in such an innocent way because he comes as an angel of light. But God is there fighting for our attention every single day. There is a war that we cannot see. And so in our physical realm, the devil comes as an angel of light. So these things come at us as, oh, this feels good. Sex feels good. Porn feels good. Drugs feel good. That's the way these things come into our lives. But in the spiritual realm, there are demons and there are angels that are in war for your soul, for your attention, for your spirit. When those arrows are coming towards us and we bite the bait, the angels are standing there like, dang, I want to fight for her. But she keeps she keeps biting the bait. He keeps biting the bait. He keeps taking the he keeps taking the bait. She won't even fight for herself. Jesus died to set us free make us free and keep us free. He died because we are so enslaved to our flesh. We are so enslaved to sin. That's why he came. So he died so that we can be set free from it and remain free from it. Now, if we break free from a, a, an addiction, yet we go back to we, we haven't really operated in that salvation. We allowed ourselves to slip back in for something we've already conquered. I'm getting a little off topic, but, um, there's an actual war being fought for us every single day. And he wants to break us, but God refuses to let that happen. So God's going to fight for your attention to the day you die. The storms may come like they did for the disciples when they were on the boat. And, you know, the waves were shaking. They was terrified. And I'm sure when we feel like we're in a storm, we get scared. Like, God, the ocean is going crazy. I'm getting wet. I'm getting splashed. I feel like I'm going to fall off. Jesus woke up. He was asleep in the storm. He woke up and he told the water to be still and everybody was fine. And that's the point I'm trying to make right here. They were terrified. The disciples were terrified and concerned for their lives. But God was with them. So that storm could not have been against them because God was for them. And if you are in a storm, God is with you and it will not conquer you. It may, whatever is coming up in life that, that may feel like it's against you, God is advocating for you and it won't win. It's not going to conquer you. The fire may be burning. <laughs> the fire may be burning like it was when King Nebuchadnezzar. I, I can't say these, name, these names, y'all. But when King Nebuchadnezzar threw 
um, those three men, I don't, I can't say their names, Abednego and the other two, he threw them in the fiery furnace to kill them, but they came out alive. And guess who did die? The men who put them in there. You want to know why? Because God was on their side. And guess who came out of the furnace with them? When, he, when they came out of the furnace, they saw four shadows. They, there were three men who were thrown into that furnace, but a fourth shadow came out with them and they said, wow, that's the son of God. God was with them in that fiery furnace and they made it out alive because King Nebuchadnezzar may have been against them, but God was for them. I am absolutely positive they were in there burning up. They was probably sweating. They was probably a little afraid, a little terrified, because I'm sure that if we were thrown, thrown into a fiery furnace, we would be shaken. I know I would. <laughs> I'm sure they were scared, frustrated, and uncomfortable just as we get when, when, when storms come our way, when fire gets thrown our way, but they made it out. And so will you, and so will I. And so I'm going to leave y'all with this verse. Proverbs 24, 16 says, the godly may trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. Life is hard, y'all. <laughs> I don't want to give you this false, I, um, false idea of how... Um, life is as a Christian because it's not easy. In fact, I think it's harder. We'll most definitely encounter hardship, pain, suffering, and strife. We will encounter it all, but God pulls us through what would break the average person victoriously. We will go through things in this life that would break down the average person, that would destroy them. We will go through those things and make it out alive because of the God we serve, because he is on our side. We will go through things that will destroy the average person's mentality, destroy that person's spirit, destroy that person's physical body, their health. But we have a heavenly father who restores, who strengthens, who gives peace that surpasses all understanding and pulls us through and pulls us up again victoriously. You are more than a conqueror with God on your side. And these things that you go through in life will not break you because of him. Say it in the mirror when you wake up in the morning. When you're going through a hard time, say it in the mirror. That's what my pastor always says. Say it, look at yourself in the mirror and say it. I am more than a conqueror. Tell yourself, look in the mirror and tell yourself, I am more than a conqueror. Say it right now if you have to. I am more than a conqueror. Whatever you're going through, it may be hard, but it will not break you. It may be tough as you're going through it. It may feel like you're breaking, but you will make it through. It will not conquer you if you stick with God. Let him fight your battles. Trust him even if it feels like you're in a burning furnace. Trust him even if it feels like you're on a boat that's going through a storm with waves. Just know that he is fighting for you the whole time and you're going to make it out alive. Y'all, I'm in awe of this word. I really am because it's crazy how when I type these things, God just pulls everything together. We pulled verses and stories from all random parts of the Bible, yet they all tie together. Written by different, you know, writers during that time period, whatever the time period was, different disciples, yet they all emphasize the same message. That's how I know God's real. They were all written by different writers that they all give the same testimony. And if we dove any deeper into that, into that scripture, I'm sure we would have had even more revelations, but we don't have time for that today. We're going to be here all day if we do that. That's the word of God. It's layered. It cuts deep. It gives life. Sharper than any two-edged sword. We may fall, but we will get back up again. You can expect to fall, but know that you won't stay down. I used to fall and choose to stay down, but now I know that God is there to pull me through. And all you got to do is keep fighting, keep walking, and keep trusting him. Keep your faith. Keep your faith. Your faith may be strong until those troubles come. Your faith, that's when your faith is tested. Stay strong and trust him. We fall down, but we get up. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, Let's pray. I think I want to pray at the end of this word today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for whoever is behind the screen watching this video or listening to this episode. Lord, I pray that you would en encourage them through the phone screen. Lord, do not allow this phone this camera or this technology to be, to be a barrier for your spirit to move because it never has been before, Lord. I pray that you would move in the person's heart, Lord. Encourage them if they've been feeling broken, Lord. Heal them and restore them. Give them the feeling that they cannot get from anywhere else, that no drug can give them, that no alcohol can give them, that no fleeting moment can give them, Lord. But remind them that you are God, the, the God who restores, Lord. Let them feel, let them encounter your Holy Spirit, oh God. Restore them and give them the peace that transcends all understanding and pull them through whatever they may be going through right now, Lord. Let them put this video 
and these verses in their back pocket. So when they encounter any discouraging time that they can go back to it, Lord, and remind themselves of the God you are, the God that we serve, Lord, that we are more than a conqueror because of you. That we will not be broken down by our struggles because of you. That you fight our battles even when we feel like we are being defeated, oh God. I pray that you would constantly remind us of that. Let we, let us write these verses on our hearts, Lord. Let us meditate on them daily, Lord. Let us speak these over ourselves more than we speak the negativity and doubt over ourselves, Lord. Strengthen us. Empower us. We are more than conquerors. Keep us going, Lord. Pull us through. Do not allow us to remain defeated. In, in a world, in a generation of young women and men, who often feel like they can't keep going, Lord. Life is hard. Life is hard. And so many of us don't make it because there are so many of us who don't know that there is a God who will pull us through those battles that make us feel like we have to take our lives. Remind us that it is not the end when those troubles come. That there is a rainbow on the other side of the storm. That there is peace. That there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it's you. Hold our hands through those moments and remind us that you are right there with us, Lord. I pray that every single person behind the screen, behind this word listening, would have an encounter with you. Show them that you are there, Lord. Show them the way you showed me. You have not left us. You will never forsake us, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. That's all I have. Thank you so much for listening. If you made it all the way to the end, let's continue this conversation in the comments or the DMs. Hit me up. Let's talk about it. If you're going through something, please reach out to me. I love to talk about God. I love to talk about life. I would love to connect with you on a deeper level behind the screen. Besides this screen, we can even get on the phone. I don't care. I don't really got that many friends. Let's chop it up. Let's talk about God. Let's talk about life. Let's talk about what we're going through. Um, let's, let's pray for each other because that's what we're supposed to do as believers, as women and men of God, as sisters and brothers in Christ. So if you enjoyed this episode, please share with a friend. Please like the video. Please comment on the video. If you're listening on the podcast, please, please, please leave a review. Honest review. I want to know your thoughts. DM me. Tell me how I can make these videos better for you guys. Send this to someone who you may think need to hear the message. Follow the Instagram at The Dirty Podcast. Follow me on TikTok at jada.christine. And have a blessed day. Bye, y'all.